Well, Mark Meritz is a political analyst at the State University of New York Maritime College and joins us live now from New York. Mark, thank you very much for your time. It's been years, as we were hearing there, of lobbying. Why has this deal been reached now and just how significant is this moment? Well, I mean, I'm not really there, but I think that it's interesting that this takes place before presidential election in the United States and an election in the United Kingdom. There's a lot of moving parts here. Uh, what's very interesting about this, if you think about it, and actually, you know, he was convicted under the Espionage Act, which, by the way, is the same law that was used against President Trump in the Florida documents case. I just wanted to make that point. But what's interesting here is really the intersection of freedom of speech and also bringing out and disclosing information that the public should know about. And that is a very tricky situation. Every state has this issue. Every country has this issue. And the WikiLeaks cables had perhaps very important whistleblowing information, but at the same time, it also divulged all sorts of cables, diplomatic cables. So this is a fine line issue between promoting freedom of speech and protecting against events and actions that are really not proper that states are doing. And that is a tough issue that every country in the world is facing. Now, right now, we resolve this issue, and this issue is one of the most convoluted, complicated issues you can imagine, because he was in the Ecuadorian consulate, not allowed to leave. Then they took him out, they put him in prison, and now they're putting him on a plane. He's going to some remote island to plead guilty and then going home to Australia. Honestly, it sounds like a soap opera on Turkish TV or British TV. I mean, it's crazy. So I think that um, it's, it's a, you know, really, they're going to make a Netflix story out of it. It's crazy. So the point, I mean, who could make this up? So the point of the matter is, is kind of, I think it's something that everybody wants to resolve and nobody wants to address, but it's uh, the issue itself presents very serious points, as Vice President Pence pointed out. He feels that he violated national security and should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But Anthony Albanese, the uh, leader in Australia, says he's an Australian, he should come home and be free. So how do you figure that out? I can't solve so, it. But it so Mark, why the, dramatic, why the dramatic reversal then by the US? As I said, I think this is a timing issue in terms of the election coming up with a new president coming in who's Trump and maybe a change in government in the United Kingdom. So there are a lot of these moving parts. So they, this was a, a moment in time where they could do this. And also, I think, which is really fundamental, is the fact that the Australian prime minister really advocated for this, is they really took this as a point of protection of an Australian citizen and protecting the rights of an Australian citizen who has been imprisoned and has been, you know, in an Ecuadorian consulate. You know, and again, I mean, he was in this consulate for, for a number of years and literally never got outside. I think at one point he had medical issues due to the fact that he had never been out in the sun, outdoors. So, you know, he's really gone through a lot. And again, the question is, is he a hero or a villain? Is he a hero for disclosing information that the people, the public should know? Or is he a villain, quote unquote, or a violator of law because he's letting out information on national security that, that nations need to protect? And maybe the public isn't entitled to know every single national security secret. And that's what's really it's behind this whole thing. And I don't think it gets resolved with this issue. I mean, Assange is going to be free, but we're still going to have these issues. Uh, certainly one for debate, Mark. Thank you very much, uh, as ever. Mark Meritz speaking there.